in Persichetti. Plenty of people take summer trips to the Hamptons, but for one community which has been seeing an increase in expensive homes, they say their new neighbors are messing with some sacred waters. Curse News' Katie Vasquez is here to tell us more about the troubles at Shinnecock Bay. Hi, Katie. Hi, Christine. Well, the bay is a big part of the culture of the Shinnecock Indian Nation, and they believe nature should remain untouched preserved, but over the years they say their waters have changed. Wildlife there isn't what it used to be, and now they're teaming up with some Sisters of St. Joseph to help try and save the bay. For thousands of years, these waters have been viewed as a sacred space by the Shinnecock Indian Nation. We are attached to seaweed. We were born into it. Our culture is from seaweed surrounded by water. But thanks to some heavy development in the Hamptons community, the clear waters of Shinnecock Bay have turned murky. A place that's one of the wealthiest places in the entire world that has no sewer infrastructure. It's really actually a disgusting and filthy situation. Um, the water's not safe. It's a brittle. Thinner. It didn't take a science degree for locals like Rebecca Genia to realize that trouble has been brewing in these waters. We have seen it going downhill. What my great grandchildren see when they're out in the bay is way different than when we were kids. So a group of Shinnecock women decided to team up, creating a kelp farming collective in 2019. The hope to tackle the rising nitrogen levels in the water. Peppers are just beginning to come along there. They enlisted the Sisters of St. Joseph who live right across the bay and established a winter hatchery on the nun's seven acre property. The sea plant pulls nitrogen out of the water while also creating a thriving habitat for shellfish. The sisters say it is all part of their mission. We are one with the earth and we give to the earth and we take to the earth and knowing that uh, we never want to take anything more than what we need. The work has only been going on for a few years, but they have seen the impact. It's the fish and um, the, the plant life, you can see an increase. They're drawn to right here, which before they weren't. The farmers and the sisters say they are determined to help because they know the consequences of just standing by. It affects us all, you, me, us, every single person, every single living creature on this earth. The farmers are also trying to bring back some life to the bay. They're attempting to grow kelp from seeds, but unfortunately, the farmers tell me that it has been harder to find the species they use, which is sugar kelp. Typically, they gather the plant in September, but as the weather has stayed warmer longer, they have to push back the harvest until October. Christine? Wow, so Katie, how are the Sisters of St. Joseph's addressing the biggest issue affecting the bay, the outdated waste system? Yeah, so unfortunately they have this outdated waste system and for years they've been applying for grants so they, they can install a new one. And fortunately they just got approved for a $250,000 grant from Suffolk County so they can convert their old septic system. Wow, all right, we'll have to wait and see. Thanks so much, Katie. All right, if you want to read some more stories about Catholics caring for God's creation, look no further than this week's tablet. First, the paper will introduce you to amateur beekeeper, Father Alex Merard. He set up his hive on the roof of St. Paul's Rectory. The priest, who was originally from upstate New York, decided he was called to help bring nature to the big city. The paper also points to an increase in Americans gardening and included in that growing group is this Franciscan monastery in the nation's capital. Their two acre urban garden provides food for the friars and has also donated some 38 tons of produce to local food banks. You can read all these stories and more in this week's paper. Just pick up a copy at your local church. You can also subscribe to get future editions sent straight to your mailbox by going online at thetablet.org. A street in South Williamsburg has been renamed to honor a fallen NYPD hero. The corner of South 3rd and Cape Street is now called Detective Wilbert Mora Street. Mora and his partner, Detective Jason Rivera, were shot and killed last year while responding to a domestic violence call in Harlem. The renaming of the street is especially important to Morris' family because it's where he grew up and where he dreamed of becoming a police officer. 
The cost to ride the subway is about to go up for the first time in years. The MTA board voted today to raise the base fare after it put any increase on hold in an attempt to bring back riders lost during the pandemic. The new fares will kick in in late August. So what does that mean for subway and bus commuters? A ride on either would go from 275 to 290. Weekly Metro cards increase from $33 to $34. The cost of a 30 day Metro card would go from $127 to $132. Express bus fare would increase a quarter to $7. In addition, weekly and monthly Long Island Railroad and Metro North passes are expected to see a 4.3% increase. Shifting now to the Vatican, where Pope Francis has named a new personal secretary. Father Daniel Pelazon is an Argentinian priest from the Pope's hometown of Buenos Aires. He, was tra he will travel to Rome at the beginning of August for his new role. He's worked with the Holy Father before. At the time, Francis was known as Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio, and he was the Archbishop of Buenos Aires. Father Pelazon, who hadn't been a priest yet, helped the future Pope organize his personal files. And the families of some current Vatican employees are attending a Holy See summer camp and Tuesday they got a special visitor. The Holy Father stopped by to see the 250 young people who range in age from 5 to 13 and the kids in turn gave the Pope gifts like bracelets and a drawing of the pontiff. The campers even got to ask the Holy Father some questions including who his superheroes were. I nonni, eh, perché i nonni hanno formato una famiglia, poi sono invecchiati, ma i nonni hanno la saggezza. E per questo è importante che voi parliate con i nonni. Voi parlate con i nonni o no? Non capisco. Good answer. Some of the campers will be seeing the Pope again very soon. They'll be attending World Youth Day in Lisbon happening in just under two weeks. And before we go, do you have a story idea or want to share a tip? Email us at newstips at desalesmedia.org or call our 24-hour number 718-517-3122. And that is this Currents News Update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.